So we've got to acknowledge that acne has a considerable burden on people's lives. Many people have emotional distress. Sometimes it interferes with how they interact with their peers. And oftentimes acne sufferers have a lack of self-esteem and a lack of self-confidence. And they can have concerns over their body image. We know that the effects of acne persist long after the pimples have gone and patients can experience acne scarring, which can be permanent, as well as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and post-inflammatory erythema or redness. Acne scars can not only affect yourself, the person who has it, but they can affect how other people perceive you. And there was a very large study that was done. Over 4,000 adults were asked what were their perceptions towards people with clear skin and those with acne. Now compared with those with clear skin, people with acne scars were thought to be less confident, less happy, less successful, and even less healthy and less attractive, and to have a less promising future. So what I'm gonna talk about is truncal acne, and this is the elephant in the room. This is an obvious problem that we often ignore. Although it's really common, we know this because 50% of people with acne on their face also present with lesions on their trunk, that is, on their chest or on their back. However, alone, truncal acne only affects 2% of people. So that is, people with truncal acne and no facial acne, it's only 2%. And as you can see from the prevalence diagram below, most people have acne on their face. Over 50% have it on their back and just under a half have it on their chests. But you can't be a mind reader. And although truncal acne is really common, it often remains underreported and underdiagnosed. Patients often don't report it. They often don't think it's important to mention, or they don't even talk about it during their consultation with you. There's limited clinical guidance. There's no global severity rating scale and limited published prevalence data. There's poor clinical differentiation, so it's often confused with common conditions such as folliculitis. In a study of nearly 700 patients, a quarter of them didn't even report that they had acne on their trunk. Truncal acne is often undertreated, even when noticed by physicians. We've talked about the lack of efficacy data. There's data that's lacking for truncal acne because most of the work has been on facial acne and there's limited clinical guidance because again, there is limited recommendations because most of these are for facial acne. But what I think is really the most important thing is that let's face it, truncal acne covers large surface areas and many people perceive it's a really difficult problem to treat because it's a big area, they might need a lot of medication and it's hard to get to to treat it. So what's holding us back? What are the limitations to treatment of truncal acne? Well, first of all, there's bleaching. Bleaching with benzoyl peroxide, sheets, towels, pillowcases. And then there's the limitations of oral treatments, such as oral antibiotics, and the risk of increasing resistant strains of C. acnes with long-term oral antibiotic use. And don't forget oral isotretinone, the risk of side effects, and also the need for monitoring. So, let's introduce Acleaf, the next generation of acne therapy. Something new for you today.